Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride. So if you like cool build montages and like seeing nice PCs, especially water cooled ones, this is definitely a video you're not going to want to miss. So while the theme is playing, why don't you hit that subscribe button and when we come back, I'm going to tell you about all the parts I got today for my build. Welcome to 2020 Tech For You. And if you're new here, I really hope we gain a new subscriber. If you're not new here and you haven't subscribed yet, I really hope you think about hitting that subscribe button this time. I know you guys have had enough of hearing subscribe from every channel you go to. So I'll just quit with that right now and we'll just get into the parts list. So real quick, here's all the parts I'll be using in my PC today. It's not just these parts, I have a few more. And that's pretty much most of the parts I'll be using in my build. I still have some parts somewhere around the house I need for this build. I can't find it all just yet because I have stuff scattered everywhere. Now let's get into this build montage. It's the whole reason you guys are here. So while the montage is playing, hit that subscribe button if you haven't. That's right, I hit you with another one. Hit that button, comment down below, share these videos with your friends, and let's get this computer built. There's a lot of parts to this PC. This is gonna take a while.
apologize for that montage. I know it was kind of long. I really hope I shortened it up a little bit for you guys. And I know it was a little jarring. I went with some electricities and some other things. I'm still trying to learn how to do some good montages. I, I have no idea. Give me some better ideas of what you guys think would look better, you know, in a montage. You know what I mean? I'm not Phil. You know, like Phil does probably the best montages I've ever seen. So please down in the comments, give me a little hints, a little clues on how to make the montages a little bit more bearable at least. So that was Polybius 2.0. That was the final form basically of Polybius. I actually have one more thing that's in this baggie that I'll be making a video of as soon as I'm doing this. But it's not a major upgrade, you know what I mean? It's just a 90 degree, 24 pin angle, so that way my, uh, the 24 pin cable doesn't, you know, have that bend in it. I'd like it to have it more straight. Yeah, I know I have the Lee and Lee streamer thing. I know it's a lot of RGB. Believe it or not, it's been together now for well over a month. It just took me forever to get to this video. And I usually shut everything off. Usually I have like the lights on white, maybe a little bit of purple and I dim everything real low. It's usually not blasting RGB all the time. I don't know how anybody actually could do it, but it's good to know it's there when I want to put RGB on and just, you know, make everything colorful for the kids. You know, sometimes Aiden comes and hangs out with me at the computer when I play Dark Souls or something, and I'll just put the RGBs full blast for him, and he really gets a kick out of it. I'm running a AMD Ryzen 5900X. That's a 12 core, 24 thread processor on an X570S chipset, which all the difference is it's a the fanless chipset that's all the s means at the end of the x570 and you can tell it's a mid to high range motherboard and a high range cpu with a mid to high and mid range graphics card so it's a little bit of mixed you know emotions in this pc so real fast i get it out of the way it's not really for gaming yes i do game with it but i have another pc i use for gaming more or less this is more for editing, messing around in like uh, UE4, messing around with Blender, you know, just things like that. So I look for more of the high core count CPUs, more what I need it for. Now the 3060 Ti is not something to, you know, just sneeze at. It's a very powerful graphics card. I'm able to get a decent overclock on it. And yes, it's on water, not because it runs hot. This graphics card ran great with the regular cooling solution on it. So really and truly, it didn't Need to be put on water i just like to have everything on water even the nvme in the m.2 slot number one that one has the corsair water cooling block thing really and truly it only runs a few degrees cooler than the rest of the ssd m.2s that are in this system total of four but for those of you who are interested under full load i haven't seen my cpu really go above 78 80 degrees tops you know all nine uni fans running at like 1240 rpm uh, my gpu i've never seen it in the system go above 47 degrees so yeah, it really doesn't run really warm and it really shouldn't run a hot. It is on water and actually it's on graphene. So I do have a video coming up on liquid graphene and its effects. Basically, how does it stand up to distilled water? How does it stand up to Corsair Hydro X? The reason I use Hydro X with the distilled water and the graphene is because the Hydro X is just as thin as distilled water. It's just going to have uh, antibacterials, antimicrobial, sorry, and anti-corrosive, corrosive, I'm having problems talking tonight, anti-corrosives. So that's pretty much the only difference. And then whatever color they're going to put inside of that Hydro X liquid. And then the graphene. So distilled water, Hydro Corsair X, and the graphene from Go Chiller. So in that video, basically I just have all three of those in one system, trying each one out, testing the temperatures. Hi, son. And that video will be coming out shortly. That's the liquid I'm running in Polybius right now, is that graphene, as you could tell. Now, also another thing in that video we're gonna talk about is how is graphene over time? Now, I will mention that in that video also, but really and truly, now that I've been running it for close to several months, there may be a hiccup with it from long-term use, and I'll get into that more in that video. We're actually gonna myth busted i may be wrong i may be right i haven't really checked yet uh you may see these weird black finger marks it looks like i thought it was maybe spilling graphene on my finger and then touching the uh, distro plate yeah no it's not i took i took it out and i wiped it down and it's not on the outside or there it's on the inside of the distro plate so i'm actually gonna have to open it clean it and then put it back together 
Stay tuned for that video, by the way. You guys always know I'm going to make a video on opening something and cleaning it. That's my shtip. I'm going to have to do that. And to tell you guys the truth, I really enjoy using this computer. It could do anything I needed to do, and I still have reserve. You know what I mean? I have 64 gigs of RAM. The GPU, I've seen that hit 100% usage, of course, because GPU accelerating in uh, Filmora, Wondershare, Filmora X, whatever it's called, the editing software I use. But it really doesn't take that much time to render. If, uh, if I got an hour 4K video that I got to edit, uh, I hit render and it's done in about 15 minutes. That's pretty good, an hour long, you know what I mean? And when I'm exporting the video, say it's down to like maybe 20 minutes and I'm exporting that 4K, it's going to be, I think maybe eight minutes to export it. How much faster do you need it, especially with a small channel like mine? So for the end, this PC runs more than perfect for me. I'm more than happy with Polybius. Polybius is gonna be like this forever at this point. He'll probably get handed down to one of my sons years down the road, maybe about three years from now when I decide to upgrade to the AM5 socket or whatever is going on at that time. But I'm not gonna be changing anything out of Polybius anytime soon. Really and truly for me to upgrade this graphics card, I'd need a real reason to. Again, the 3060 Ti has been phenomenal for me. It runs all the games I do play on here perfect. Editing, like I said again, everything renders and exports very fast. Fast for a small channel, which I wanna get to that part now. Small channel, come on guys, subscribe, comment, like on these videos. That really does help this channel out. And I would appreciate if you guys go down to the description and look for ways you could help the channel. I really enjoy making these videos and I wanna keep on making these videos, but as of right now, now, the affiliate links that you guys have been using, that's the only way we've been bringing in a little bit of cash. I think in total we brought in $50 in about six months in Amazon gift cards. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, it's something that keeps me like positive to keep making these videos. So if you guys would be generous enough to go down in the description and find other ways you can help the channel more directly that would be really appreciated and i'll always do a little extra for those who are looking to actually help the channel more directly so if you decide to help the channel if you have more complicated questions you need help with something more hands-on or you know through a uh, facetime or something i'm willing to do that for those of you who are willing to become a patreon so if you want to become a patreon guys let me know in the comments or email me just go to the about me in my home page my email will be there email me and i'll let you know how you can help the channel more you know closely and again i'll definitely help whoever decides to become patreons for this channel more directly remember guys i'm still only like 500 and loose change amount of people as of right now a thousand to get uh, monetized and several thousand to actually start making some cash on this platform so again guys like subscribe comment all those other things i may have forgotten i'm always forgetting what else to say but i will see you guys on the next one so thank you guys for watching this video and i will see you guys on the next one like i just said already late peace i'm out i must be hungry because i'm going crazy Thank you.